How's it going guys? Doe here. Hope we're doing good. Today I want to explain my current skill tree layout in Godfall, why I chose to put certain skill points in certain places, and where I would change it for certain fights if I really needed to, and where I did change it to help myself out in certain fights. Now if you don't want to understand how any of this works and you just want to see what it looks like right now, this is my current layout. The whole goal of this layout is to be a glass cannon to get as much viable damage that I will be actually using and not wasting, and I'll explain that a bit later on. So if you want that, here it is. Now, to explain this, I'm going to have to clear all my skills, which costs you nothing. You can clear skills whenever you want. You can clear skills when you're in a fight if you wanted to. I wouldn't suggest doing it. Like, no matter no matter what you're doing, it costs you nothing in the game, no currency, none of that nonsense. So clear skills. The way this works, you cannot put points in the middle of this place. You have to start at the corners. You have to start in these places. I'm going to go ahead and explain where I'd invest points in early on, but after that, it kind of comes down to preference and what you want to do. Then after that, I'm going to explain where I would change up my, my end goal with my points if I had to. So to get started, my very first point I would spend is going to be in weapon techniques. This is because you get two extra abilities for every single weapon, a northern and a southern technique. I don't see why you'd, you wouldn't take this. It's just more fun, more damage. It does make sense not to take this. So one point in here, call it good. Then I go down to finesse and put one point in here because when you use a directional key and you dodge, you slide. In this game, there is no stamina, so you can just dodge indefinitely or slide if you have finesse, and it's pretty helpful in some fights. Then weak points. When you hit an enemy weak point, you deal increased damage and knock down the enemy. Weak points are normally going to be a red dot in an enemy when they attack you or after they attack you, things like that. And uh, you don't have to dodge to, to make them appear, by the way. Some folks think you do, you do not. But some, on boss fights, some of them are blue. Hitting the weak point, all you gotta do is place your cursor on it when you attack. And most of the time, it'll give you a, a, a yellow indicator saying you hit it. Or you're going to hit it if you hit the monster after you are targeting the weak point. So weak points are used on dang near every single fight. They're massively helpful, so definitely put a point in there. Then go back up top left. Weapon timing. After you light attack, you can time correctly and then light attack again. And that will give you a different set of, uh, I guess, a combo than you normally would get. Now, the second point we're going to put in here is what's going to make it really good. And to get that and make it work properly, invest a point into Might, which is more physical damage, and then put a point into Rampage. So land multiple weapon hits in a short period of time to enter Rampage where you deal 20% more damage, but lose Rampage if you don't hit an enemy for 10 seconds. So we need this because after we get Rampage, we can then go back to weapon timing and during a timing window, when you use your heavy attack, you perform a heavy timing attack and if Rampage is active, you'll deal 500% damage and also consume Rampage. So that's massive. It's very helpful. There are some fights where you have Rampage active, but the... The mob is going to run away, so you can use your timing attack and use your heavy timing attack to expend Rampage and deal 500% damage. So, putting that point in there, call it good. Then from there, I could go to Polarity Attacks, but I don't use it. And the reason why I don't use it personally is because I have, uh, currently, really, really good Longsword. And I pretty much just use this as my main hand, and I don't really use my offhand, aside from using the primary, which is a slowing field, which is kind of broken, and also to apply a breach damage. But if you're just starting out the game, you might want to invest a point in polarity attack damage, or polarity attacks because it's more damage. The way it works is you charge up your polarity attack by hitting enemies with your weapon, when fully charged, swap weapons to unleash a shockwave and boost your weapon's damage by 20% for 30 seconds. It's actually really good. So. When you're starting out the game, I would take this personally, depending on the weapons you're using. But where I'm at in the game, which is in game, I don't really use it that often at the moment. It, it depends on what I'm doing. Anywho, since I wouldn't take polarity attack, I would instead take Sundering Slam, and I'd invest two points in here. So hold E and C on uh, PS5. I have no idea what you press. Just figure it out. Like go into your skill tree, look at this item, see what the two buttons say. Anywho. Hold ENC, then release to perform a Sundering Slam. Based on how long you charge your Sundering Slam, nearby enemies take up to 20% damage for 30 seconds. So if I invest two points in here, it'll be 50% damage. It is nuts. Like, that's nutty damage. And you'll know you time it correctly whenever you hear a sound and it glows like a, a white after you're done charging it, like a flash. And that's when you should let go because that'll be like, you know, max charged. But Sundering Slam is very freaking good. Like, it's insane. 
And then from there, I'd invest points into Soul Shatter. Soul Shatter is used on every single fight. Because if you use a light attack or a northern technique, you apply Soul Shatter to a, mo a mob. And when you use a heavy attack or a, northern or a southern technique, you expend it. So their health bar will have a white bar that's building on it. That is Soul Shatter. So it's good to have and it's useful on every single fight. That's why I would take it. And then from there, you can go wherever you really want to because everything past this point is just going to be added damage or survivability if you want. And most of these things, they help out for sure, but they're just not going to be that crazy. Elements is nice because if you inflict an element on a monster and they have it and you have a lot of points in here, you'll deal 35% more damage to that monster, which is good. Now, the annoying thing is with the skill tree, you can't right click or, or press a button on, on console and like take one point away. You have to reset the entire tree, which can get pretty annoying. And this is what my skill tree looks like again for the most part. I did leave spirit unchecked or un unslotted in because spirit doesn't seem to be that immensely useful right now. It is more damage because what spirit does, it makes it to where your weapon techniques deal more damage or your abilities, which are weapon techniques, they do more damage. Your shield throw does more damage and your shield abilities and your polarity attack does more damage. Now, that does not apply from what I'm aware of to your uh, actual damage bonus. It just applies to your actual polarity attack when you swap weapons. So spirit is more damage, but it's not like a crazy thing. So if you guys wanted to, you could take these six extra points and put them into polarity attack if you like that and or put them into siphon for when you're fighting Zamora and you need to suck off the beetles to survive because it helps out a freaking ton like seriously makes that fight a lot more easy if you need it and resistance if you need it and and things like that and to explain why if i didn't already why i don't take breach and why i don't take takedowns breach isn't used on most mobs or on enough mobs to make it where i want to take it and the bonuses here aren't that crazy to me and takedowns are uh like the investment is not really worth the uh the payoff so i just don't do that Shocking development, but takedowns is actually kind of busted. This is a really freaking good skill if you're doing Tower of Trials. That's pretty much the only time that I can think of right now that I would use takedowns. So to show what I would use in the Tower of Trials with a certain build, or with, a, I guess, most builds, this is what I'm taking. You can remove Spirit and put it in Vitality if you want more health. And you can probably also move Banners if you didn't want this to somewhere else, like maybe Resistance. But this is what I use for the most part. Now, to explain takedowns and why it's so good, which I overlooked this in the first place, you perform a takedown on small enemies immediately after a parry. That isn't crazy, but you get more takedown damage, and then you can perform a takedown on larger enemies immediately after a parry if they are below 40% health. Then more takedown damage, and then finally, for 30 seconds after defeating an enemy with a weapon technique, you can perform a free spectral takedown by holding E to aim and F to execute. And that is good, but it's hard for me to uh, remember to use. So, yeah. And then finally, shield throw is something that I use for other fights as well. But to explain that, you get to arc your shield. And this makes takedowns even better. because, Or it gets you more ability to do takedowns because if you throw your shield and hit enemies that can be knocked down by your shield, you can run to them and do a takedown. So, yeah. This is what I use in the Tower of Trials for the most part. So... Back to the other part of the video. I'm gonna go ahead and fill it out the way I'd use it for most fights. And this is my build layout for the majority of my fights. I'll probably make videos on how I would approach certain bosses. And in those videos, I'll show a more specific loadout, which will probably look a lot like this, but it might change a little bit. I might actually take vitality for certain fights. We'll see what happens. Now, the last point I'm gonna put here and explain why I put it here is gonna be in uh, finesse. And that's to give myself a 10% longer parry window, which helps out a like it helps out enough, I feel. But anyway, y'all, that is my skill tree layout for most of the stuff I approach in this game. And hopefully this helps you in some way. If it did, make sure to drop a like, comment down below, and subscribe for more gaming content. And I hope you guys enjoy Godfall. And people keep asking me if I think the game's good. I think the game is good. I like it. I enjoy it. But uh, thank y'all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.